Hi, I'm John Schreiber. For 18 seasons, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center has been the state's premier home to world-class and community-centered performances. We pride ourselves on presenting something for everyone. That's why we're proud to partner with the Caucus Educational Corporation to produce one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato at NJPAC. This unique series features some of the best talent New Jersey has produced. We're pleased to welcome them and you to the Arts Center. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by TD Bank, United Airlines, Verizon Communications, The Fidelco Group, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Cone Resnick, Accounting, Tax and Advisory, where forward thinking creates results, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go you right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Sometimes you, uh, you're used to see us in our regular studio, but right here we're at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center one-on-one -on -one at NJ Pack. This is uh, Newark at a Crossroads. We are pleased to welcome, for the first time, won't be the last time, you Weber, president of New Jersey Devils and the Prudential Center. How are things going at the uh, Prudential Center? So uh, we've been here for about 17 months now. They've been a tumultuous and fun ride uh, being becoming part of this community. Uh, Joshua Harris and David Blitzer, we came in this group in August of last year. And we have found the city, the community, the state to be incredibly receptive to the narrative we're trying to write. Talk about it, because uh, I was just telling you that our kids are Devils fans and we've, we've been there. And um, this is an incredibly competitive marketplace. You've got the Rangers, um, the, the Islanders still play? The Islanders <laughs> do play, and actually having a good year, but thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah, but it is always competitive here, and it's a very yep. crowded marketplace. How do you stand out? So I think that was one of the issues with the Prudential Center for a long time, is that no one could really identify what the building was. I think most would say it was the home of the New Jersey Devils. And right. It's interesting in our conversation, that's the first place we take it. You know, let's talk about the Devils. And so part of what we've done over the first you know, year we've been here is to build, again, an identity for the building. Like, what does this building represent? And I think for a long time, especially if you look at the seven year history of the, what it took to build this building out of the ground. Sure. Um, many in this community thought of it as the castle on the hill. Like, I don't know what happens there. It seems beautiful. Um, but again, it wasn't necessarily something that was um, really engaging with all that was happening around us. So we've worked really hard to reposition this building to be kind of the town square of New Jersey. Like town square. This is a place where all the greatest things that you would want to enjoy about the lifestyle of what it means to live in this community, we bring the world to your, your doorstep, basically. I'll and give you an example of something great that happened there that people would say, really, it happened at, at the Prudential Center? You had Special Olympics. Right. All the kids from Special Olympics from all around, the USA Games were there. Yep. It happened at your place. So yeah, we like to believe that those, those are the types of events, those kind of life-altering, transformative, types of things that those kids that participated in Special Olympics opening ceremony will remember for the rest of their lives. But we do it on a daily basis. Sure. Like, so whether it's a graduation for a high school, it's being done on the same stage as the Rolling Stones. As, I saw the Rolling Stones there. Yeah. So that is the beauty of a building um, that represents more than just bricks and mortar, but represents, again, all of the things that we um, love to celebrate about who we are and doing it one place. One of the most exciting things seeing that I saw, my wife and I were there for a Rolling Stones concert. It's Bruce Springsteen, Mick Jagger, same stage, your place. She's amazing. I mean, that stuff just doesn't happen. Right? And, and then <laughs> I think Lady Gaga was there too. I mean, that's, that's, talk about a town square. It's not a bad town square. And again, that's the beauty of what I think we're, the, the story, the narrative we're trying to unfold is that if you were to walk through the streets of Prague, like they know the devils. They know what happens in this building on a night-to-night -night basis throughout the year. And yet it's those people that are not you know, halfway around the globe, but just halfway down the street that we're trying to engage in a way that says, this is your building, this is your team, these are your activities. And um, much of the work that we do is not just on game night or show night, 
but how we engage and take that kind of content and mm -hmm. kind of bring it out to the com on a community basis. Talk about marketing it because uh, we just sitting in that chair just a few minutes ago was the mayor of uh, the great city of New York, Ross Baraka, and we we're talking about a whole range of issues, but one of them was public safety. The perception of public safety, the issue of getting folks who may not know this city very well, who are concerned, worried, to come down to the Prudential Center. How do you deal with that? Well, first off, <clears throat> we, we study the facts. The facts are uh, very clear. It's safer, it's three times safer to come to an event at Prudential Center than it is at Madison Square Garden or Barclays or some of these other things. It's nine times safer than going to a Yankee game. The, the, the possibility that something could happen, like we live in an urban environment. Like you can't say that it's gonna be entirely, you know, just cloistered from the, what, the, the practicality of life. The fact is though, if you're gonna to go to a major sporting event or major event in entertainment, Newark is the safest place to do it, ironically. I know that's different than the perception, but we really felt it was important to understand what the building stood for and not take a kind of a defensive stance of saying, well, let me just show you the facts. So <clears throat> again, I think those, um, the part about Newark being safe, I think there's a much different story to be told about the trajectory of Newark, where it's going, why are we feel bullish about it, why we're investing millions of dollars in terms of the infrastructure of what's happening here in Newark and what that payoff will look like. And marketing and branding that is huge. Of course, you know, so for the longest time, we had a lot of folks who live in outlying communities who would drive their cars, park, run into the building, run out and leave. And what we really see as a long-term vision here is those that would come linger have the sense of place, a sense of destination that goes beyond, again, the walls of our building, but a sense of place in Newark. And that's what we'll be working on over the next half decade. Final question before we lay out of here, you. The Devils, the future, what do you see? You know, this is a team that has a tradition in history that's really unsurpassed. There's very few teams that have had three championships mm. in the last 20 years. I mean, you're talking Yankees and Dad Cowboys and all this stuff. So as a franchise, it's already among the elite. I think what you're gonna see with Josh Harris and David Blitzer is an incredible amount of, of innovation and uh, ingenuity in terms of every type of resource you can. These are two highly competitive guys and we're gonna do everything we can to compete at the highest level and do so in a way that's really cutting edge. You Weber, president, New Jersey Devils and the Prudential Center. I wanna thank you for joining us here at uh, another iconic place in the city of North, <laughs> New right. Jersey Performing Arts Center. Thanks, you. Great being it. here. You got it. This is one on one from right here at NJ Pack. Stay with us. We'll be right back. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Steve PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Back by popular demand. Bill Charlap, jazz pianist, Grammy Award nominee. You come from a, an amazingly talented musical family, do you not? Well, I was lucky to be brought up around all kinds of music. My father was Moose Charlap, a composer, a theater writer who wrote most of the music for the Mary Martin production of Peter Pan, now the Allison Williams production of Peter Pan also. And uh, Your mom? My mom, Sandy Stewart a great singer who sang with Benny Goodman and was a regular on the Mitch Miller show, the Perry Como show. Did you do a couple CDs with her? I did. How cool was that? It was wonderful. <laughs> She's still one of the great uh, popular singers around today and she sounds better than ever and uh, it was a joy. did you also, uh, and, and your wife, Rini? Yes. She's a musician? Rini Rosnes is one of the world's great jazz pianists who's played with everyone from Wayne Shorter to Joe Henderson to Ron Carter, so. So what happens? Your family gets together and? We eat. <laughs> you eat. And after you eat, and after you argue, oh, I'm sorry, that's my family. Um, where does music come in? Well, music is part of our life all the time. And uh, it's just uh, kind of a natural piece of the landscape of our world. You were three yes. when you started. Yes. Why? Well, I don't ever remember not playing the piano. Um, I think I was imitating my father because he was always sitting at the piano composing, singing, and uh, my mom was singing his songs, and I just gravitated to the piano naturally. Where was this? I grew up on East 51st Street in New York City. Wow. So. Talk about some of the, uh, I've got your CDs here. Mind if we plug? Why not? Let's go. 
I hold it up, you tell me what you got. Well, that's live at the Village Vanguard. The Village Vanguard is the premier jazz club in the world, and that's with my trio of Kenny Washington at the drums and Peter Washington at the bass. We've been playing together for 18 years, and it's a very wonderful musical family that we have together. This is uh, somewhere. The songs of Leonard Bernstein. Bernstein, of course, the theater composer in this case, with Wonderful Town and On the Town, Candide, and of course, West Side Story. Again, uh, Kenny Washington and Peter Washington. Both of those albums were Grammy nominated. And what do we got here? That's Double Portrait. That's me and my wife, Rini Rosnes. And that's an uh, album of two piano duets uh, with all kinds of material from Jerry Mulligan to Joe Henderson to Wayne Shorter to Rini Rosnes' own compositions. Where did you and Rini meet? We met, uh, well, we knew each other peripherally because I would turn on the radio and hear this great jazz piano player, and I always thought, wow, I really love the way that person plays the piano, and invariably he would come up, the announcer would say, that was Rini Rosnes. So I was aware of her in New York City as I was coming up, and she came here from Vancouver, Canada, and she was making a great name for herself playing with Joe Henderson. And uh, we got to know each other better on a tour with 10 pianists. It was an amazing tour in Japan when we really became friends. Um, Kenny Barron, and Cedar Walton, and Ray Bryant, and Junior Mance, and uh, Benny Green, and the late, great James Williams, uh, Eric Reed, Don Friedman, all these wonderful people. So it was amazing to tour with all those giants and heroes of ours and peers of ours, hear all those uh, different perspectives on the jazz piano lineage. Let me ask you about this place, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. John Schreiber, the uh, CEO here, is not just a great executive, but, uh, you know, accomplished in the field of jazz, loves jazz, connected to jazz. What does this place mean? Well, NJ Pack is really important. It's a major performing arts center right here in the heart of Newark with a beautiful uh, opera house, a, a, a big theater, a 500-seat theater, the Victoria Theater, and the Chase Room, which we're in right now, about a 300-seat theater. All of them very elegantly appointed. And John Schreiber is very knowledgeable and experienced. He worked with George Ween at Festival Productions and then JVC um, for so many years, and he really knows the music. Mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to put on some wonderful programs here. You know, the, the great American songbook has been talked about, right? Yes. Uh, our partners at Public Broadcasting uh, and JTV, WNT, together with uh, NJ Pack, put on you know, the great American songbook here to perform this. What does the Great American Songbook mean to you? Well, the Define Great it. American Songbook is a couple of things. Mostly, it's the great theater writers, people like Gershwin, Kern, Porter, Berlin, Arlen. They're the obvious ones, <laughs> but it goes <laughs> Those, beyond that. They are, they are, and it does go beyond that, of course, to Frank Lesser and Cy Coleman and the next generation. But there's also another strain, which is uh, the great African-American writers, people like Duke Ellington and U.B. Blake and Fats Waller, uh, Shelton Brooks. They didn't have the same opportunities in terms of American musical theater because of racism. But um, the songs and the way that they express all the myriad feelings of love and um, so many other things, the way that they dance, the way that the melodies and harmonies mm. and lyrics balance with each other make them such a perfect canvas for the jazz improviser, and they really are uh, our American music. Before you uh, go over to this wonderful piano and play a little bit for us, I'm curious about something. Could you even imagine, comprehend, what your life would be like if you did not play that piano, not that particular piano, but play piano and play the piano and be part of this jazz world? Could you imagine? No, it's uh, so much a part of my inner world and so much a uh, <clears throat> part of the entire continuity of my life. So it would be a, quite a different life. Maybe I'd be a short order cook. <laughs> We are glad that uh, you started at three. You're playing a song called By Myself. By Myself. That was written for Fred Astaire, as so many songs were. This is Arthur Schwartz and Howard Dietz. They wrote songs like Alone Together and That's Entertainment and Dancing in the Dark and this mm -hmm. great song, By Myself. By Myself, Bill Charlotte. 
uh, world-renowned uh, jazz pianist right here at the beautiful NJ Pack. Just relax and just uh, sit back and listen. Thank you, Steve. Great you, to be here with you. Great to have you. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Jody Jaron is the uh, director of the School of the Garden State Ballet. Welcome to the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, one-on-one. -on -one. Thank you very much. And you were telling me before we got on the air that we got you from California. You came here to perform in? Chorus Line. So you admit that? Yes, I do. How great was that? It was great. Life changing? No, that my, my whole family grew up on Broadway, so it was just what we do. What? <laughs> my whole family grew up on Broadway, it's just what we do, really? Yeah, my mother and father, that's where they met. And um, from the time I was little, as far as I can remember, that's what we did. Was it expect? Do you think it was expected of you that you would dance? No, no, not at all. I think I, I think it was expected I'd be the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> Why? My father's from Green Bay. Vince Lombardi. Yes. That was a big deal for you. Huge. Wow. Huge. Tell us about the school. Tell us about your work. The school is uh, we. It was founded in 1961. So we're 64 years old now, and um, it's been here in the city of Newark the whole time. Who are the students? Uh, the students are the rocks of Newark. They are the future. They're the kids that matter. Um, they come from all the uh, elementary schools, public schools, charter schools, private schools. Um, we had our senior this year, Jordan Horton, who goes to uh, one of the charter schools here in town, just got a full four-year ride. Mm. from the Posey Foundation to go to DePaul University in Indiana. 
What's that like for you when that happens? Oh, my gosh. It makes me so happy, especially because she just blew her knee out, dislocated it right before we opened Nutcracker. Oh. Senior and by the way, year. Nutcracker, actually, we're doing this on December the 5th. It'll be seen after. Yeah. You just said Nutcracker opened this morning. It opened this morning. Yeah, and she can't be part of it, but she's there with us, and she went to her interview for that scholarship mm. the next day on crutches. You know, uh, in that chair just a couple of hours ago, we sat down with the mayor of the city of Newark, Ros Baraka, talked right. about a whole range of things, uh, but disproportionately about crime, about uh, a whole range of challenges that young people face in this city. Mm. Um, yeah. What do you see in the kids that you have coming in to your school? I mean, they are facing some extraordinary challenges here in the city, but they come in to dance. What are they facing? Um, I think their biggest challenge is confidence in themselves, that they can fulfill the dreams that they have. They are, certainly have access to the knowledge of what's possible, but I don't think that they feel really confident that there are the people that can help them get there. Um, and I think that that's mm. a lack of confidence in that. They see a lot of you know, turmoil within their right. families, within their community, and so I think that they don't really see a clear path. And they need people that believe in them that are willing to reach out to them and say, yeah, let's go from this point to this point and we'll do it together. And let's, if you need me, I'm there. Let's talk about dance uh, for kids, particularly boys. Has, has it changed, meaning programs like uh, Dancing with the Stars or So You Think You Can Dance, to what degree do you believe it's changed, or that whole stigma. genre? I don't know if it's, okay, yeah. Is the stigma still there? Yeah. Talk about it. It's not, it's there from their fathers. From their fathers? The fathers are the ones that are like, I don't know if I want my friends to know my kid does ballet. <clears throat> the kids, nine times out of 10, are totally cool mm. with it. They're fine. They're willing to be, they're proud of it. They're like, I mm. can dance. I get the girls. What's well, better than that? So, so, so back up. A few years ago, help me. I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, was it Billy Elliot? Was yep. that the movie I saw? Mm -hmm. That just blew me away. I thought it was so special, so extraordinary. But that's a perfect example of it. His dad wasn't on board with it. A he, I thought, hey, this is a movie. No, that's more typical. That's more atypical of what. That's boy, more typical that of is. what would happen. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard for. It's think not about changing it. dramatically. No, not yet. It's getting there. It's better because of those shows. It's absolutely better there because of the way the, the men on those shows present themselves. Athletically, I mean, they're ripped. They're, they're wonderful guys. They have, great, they have a great sense of mm. charisma. These are things that boys do, would like to have. Do, do you think it's some sort of, again, I want to get to some sort of psychological or sociological, you know, psychobabble or whatever. How much do you think it is caught up in, in, in for some, their fear the father's fear, clearly unfounded, as to why there would be fear. My kid's going to be gay if he dances. That's exactly as if that's a problem in and of itself, but the direct correlation. How much do you think it's that? I think that's about 65% of it still. Huh. Still. So, and these kids dance, right? Yeah. They come. Yeah. And it brings what for them? What does it do for them? Boys and girls. A lot, of the, um, a lot of the boys are very, very creative. Very, very creative, but don't really ha know how to channel it. And so boys are very different than girls, as I'm sure you know. They, they, they're physical. They want to they wanna push something, you know, move something. It's a physical frustration and, and a development. Um, with the dance, they all of a sudden are free to jump as high as they want. Nobody sure. will say to them, no, you can't jump. Go ahead, jump. I'm happy. Jump as high as you want. But while you're up there, could you do this? Right. And so all of a sudden the brain clicks in and they go, oh, wait a minute, you want me to do, how about if I do two of those? Yeah, go for two. Go for three while you're up there. Get high enough and do four. Competitive. Absolutely. So wait, hold on, but you have schools not just in Newark. Where are the other places? Randolph and Rutherford. Okay, so Randolph... Is that Bergen County, Morris County? No, yeah, that's way up there by Denville and um, Rockaway. Okay, and Rutherford is in Bergen County. Rutherford's right do, there. Do you bring, ever bring the kids together? They are all together what's all the time. What's that like? 
Especially with the newer kids. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fine. They don't see any difference. Kids don't see any, they have no problem with it. <laughs> they're like, whatever. They're We're dancing. all dying here together. What do you mean dying? Well, because I'm not very pleasant. <laughs> I don't buy that. Look at you right now. Look how pleasant no, you are. No, no. Look how nice no. you are. No, I have the Vince Lombardi thing comes out. Yeah. The, hold on. Yeah. Winning. It's the red g- hair. G- give me, give Winning's me the... everything. <laughs> it's everything. And the kids are everything. You cure that tough. I have all brothers. <laughs> so that's your explanation? I, I box what is it every single kids? morning. To I go boxing. To have that tough standard, because I'm, I'm, I'm worse than you are, I think. So to have that really tough standard, to, be, to ride those kids, what do you think it does for them? Well, they know exactly what they can and cannot do. The boundaries are set. It's ba- the boundaries are set, and I, they know that they can push me so far, and then that's it. That's it. They're done. And I have a lot of parents that say, my kid's upset that you didn't yell at her today. What? Yeah. They don't, why, you don't like her anymore. She, you didn't yell at her enough. So uh, let me understand that, because I'm <laughs> writing a book on leadership called Lessons in Leadership. You equate yelling with love. Well, there's a way I to I love y- your philosophy. It's, it's. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's is everyone listening in the voice. control room? <laughs> so Jody Jaron, who is a master of leadership <laughs> and dance, the school director Says of the school yelling is it? of Garden, the Garden State Ballet. Yelling is love. I love you. <laughs> you are the best. She's good. Thank you so much. We should write a book together. <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in cooperation with NJTV. And 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by TD Bank, United Airlines, Verizon Communications, The Fidelco Group, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Cone Resnick, and by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Did you know that the enrollment period under the Affordable Care Act ends February 15th? For those who are still uninsured, you may be eligible for financial support. But those who do not sign up for insurance must pay a fine of $325 or more. Every plan covers preventative care, doctor visits, and prescriptions. And with over 40 plans to choose from, you have every opportunity to get on the road to health.